Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Joe from Gadgetry Tech and today we're going to talk about the Moondrop Para. This is a $300 open back planar magnetic headphone, obviously from Moondrop. Now this was not sent to me from Moondrop, this was actually sent to me from Apos.audio. I've worked with them on covering other products in the past, so I want to give a huge thanks to them. It won't affect what I say about it, I have uh, very honest takes, at least from my own user experience, so I'll be sharing that in the moment, but I will have links in the description below. Should you decide to purchase this after or during watching the review, it'll take you to the APLS website. It'll also have some links for some other models I may discuss later in the review. So I want to start with the basics and one, of course, you get the Moondrop Para box and, you know, Moondrop is known for their artwork. I've reviewed IEMs from Moondrop in the past and it's no different here. This is the first on-ear headphone I've covered from Moondrop. Uh, so I'm assuming they do something similar to their other models. You get a nice little product brochure, you get a postcard, which is kind of an interesting inclusion, but hey, you get some artwork, QC badge, warranty info, etc. Then you get swappable pads. It's a very different pad swap mechanism, so I'll show you that in a moment. And then of course, a uh, this is I do like this. So this is a 3.5 terminated cable, meaning you can buy any cable you want. It's nothing proprietary, it's not recessed or anything like that, but it's dual 3.5, and of course it comes with a quarter inch adapter. It's actually a really nice cable. It's kind of like a nylon shoelace material. However, again, I want to be fully honest with my review. My cable started becoming defective on this side. If you ever, you know, do audio demos or you're just listening to music and you're adjusting the volume, sometimes you're bumping the cord and it seemed like anytime I shifted the cord a little bit, I had a little bit of a staticky pop sound and sometimes I would actually have a channel cut altogether. So I ended up not using this cable too much. This is my unit again and uh, I switched. Now, because it's universal, I ended up just using FIO and HIFIMIN cords, uh, no problem, because they all use the same general idea. There weren't any microphonics with this. The cable did, you know, perform the way it should when it did work, but mine was defective. Now, getting into the Para, I had an interesting unboxing experience with this too, because I wanted to show you the top head view. If you can see that the pad kind of sticks forward a little bit, I'll try different angles. You see how it's not lined up? My headband, is also tweaked. So this was definitely not a cherry picked review unit. And if you get past these initial defects that I have, if the rest of the review is favorable for what you're looking for, then great. But I, I can't and don't want to hide anything that happened with me. This didn't really give me the best initial impressions, obviously, uh, when I first started handling it, I'm like, okay, this isn't off to a good start, but um, the show must go on. So I wanna talk about the pads. These pads are extremely comfortable. I do like the padding material choice. It's very soft. The leatherette is actually really smooth as well. And the pad mounting system is pretty clever. So you don't just like, you know, slide the rubber off of the, the ring that secures it. And it has this like metal plate. Now I wish this came with extra metal plates because you know, $300 isn't super high end, but it's also not like dirt cheap either. And you know, with the way this works, you basically pop this disc off you can see it kind of coming off the liner here. Once you've effectively swapped the pad materials, this disc is magnetic to the horizontal magnets that go across the planar magnetic driver. It's a really clever design. I like this approach, it's different. And all you have to do is rest it on and the magnets secure it. My pads are slightly asymmetrical. Um, so keep that in mind, you want the thicker part of the pad towards the back, it's gonna help maintain a proper seal. Then getting into the terminals. So again, I mentioned the whole 3.5 thing. They do stick out. It's not a bad design. This really comes down to personal preference. I actually think the in somewhat industrial look is kind of nice. It's a little different. It has some heft to it. And the fact that it's angled is nice because that helps again with the whole microphonics issue before. And it's also very easy to identify which side is left and right because once the cable is installed, you know that it's pointing forward. Uh, to go towards the front, so at least you know where your left and right is. Now while I'm wearing these, I do want to talk about comfort. I mentioned the pads being relatively soft, and I like the leatherette pads more. They actually feel softer on my skin. This is kind of like a suede material, but it is a little bit scratchy. You can kind of hear it rubbing against my skin. It's a lighter clamp force, and because the drivers are fairly heavy, it's not the most stable on my head. I also, for your head size, depending how large your head is, this is on the smallest setting, and it's borderline still too large for my head. I've run into this issue with a few headphones before. I'm not sure why this is like becoming a thing. I don't usually wear my hat. Obviously, this is just for the review. But if I look down, they move forward and like my ear is what's catching it. If I look up, 
they swing back and that changes the sound quality affects your seal and frankly it just feels kind of cumbersome i wish they made it a slightly stronger clamp and that there was just one extra click down as far as like a height adjustment just to give me that little extra versatility I'd hope for. The cuffs themselves also have dual articulation so you have a little bit of rotation here so you can kind of angle them in and out and they also pivot up and down. Now this is kind of stiff. It's not like, like you can see even though this headset's heavy, it's not even letting go uh, of that rotation. I actually have to grab the headphone to move it. So because of that, if I put this on, you can see it doesn't even conform to my head. I have to actually push it and line it up. So this is definitely not one of those one-handed headphones, you know, like Bear Dynamics, their design, you could pretty much just hook it on your head and it's good to go. This one you wanna kind of fit in a little bit just to make sure it's seated properly. That way you get better comfort and also better sound performance. Once I've dialed that all in though and I have a good seal and I'm sitting upright most of the time, the comfort actually is quite nice. I can wear these for a long time. The suspension strap does distribute weight quite well so I don't feel any like pressure points. I do like how this feels on top. It just needed to be a little bit better on stability, but comfort can be great, especially if you have a larger head. If you are concerned with weight and specs, I'm gonna put this on the scale real quick, and this comes in at 540 grams. So it's got a little bit of weight to it. The planar magnetic headphones in general can be heavier, especially depending on the magnet structure. This has 100 millimeter drivers, so the, uh, the weight of those magnets can be quite significant. When you look at the pads, I'm not so much concerned on ear pad diameter and depth, because these things are huge. I mean, I'm going, let's go by metric and we'll go by the height. I'm getting over 60 millimeters of height. It's closer to like 63, 64 millimeters. And then if again, I go to width, it should be similar. Yeah, they look relatively round, but the way this is stitched, it's just like one or two millimeters more narrow on the leatherette pad. The depth is quite generous as well. I'm getting over 20 millimeters. In fact, I'm getting just about 23 millimeters of pad depth on the back side and closer to 20 to 21 millimeters on the front. That taper I was talking about earlier isn't too significant. And then when you look at the suede pad material, it's much more narrow on the width. We're closer to 41, 42 millimeters of uh, width. And then the height still gets over 60 millimeters. So we're pushing like 68 at the peak, but because that tapers in, just keep that in mind. Now, when it comes to sound quality, I like to cover it in two parts. One is the objective side, which uses my headphone rig with my measurements, also to be used to compare against other headphones and headsets I've measured. Don't use my measurement database to compare to someone else's measurements because they don't have the exact same rig and all ears hear differently, which is why you can have your own preferences on what you like versus what I like. Having said that, we're gonna get into the sound quality. So I switched to the leather pad. Now there is, which is the blue line here, the fenestrated pad. The blue line has different characteristics. It has rolled off sub bass, so there is less of a deep bass impact. If you are chasing that, then you may like the stock pads that are included, which is the hybrid pad. There's also a slight lift in the upper mid range. You know, when you start, or at least the mid range, when you start looking at like 800 to 1500 Hertz, leading into the treble region, it has different characteristics. It's a little bit more forward early on, but then it tapers off and it's not as bright at the 3000 Hertz setting or three kilohertz there's also a little bit more of a lift as you approach over 5k and it does alter the tonality of music both of these have their own unique flavor or sauce to the sound and neither of them are very neutral it's neutral in the mid-range you can see this tabletop here from 150 hertz to about 800 it's just as you get into that upper mid and treble region it starts to vary these are if i had to classify them bass neutral treble bright so if you are looking for something that's opposite or has a warmer sound signature, this particular one out of the box isn't gonna do that. I simply just picked these pads because it was more pleasing for me to wear and I can always do custom EQ anyway because that's my preference is to focus on the comfort as long as it gets me close enough to the sound signature I like, I use EQ to kind of take it the rest of the way. Obviously dial in and, and you know, pick your favorite, kind of experiment with both if you end up getting one of these and see what you like. When it comes to subjective audio and how I hear it and my listening experience goes, this is gonna be a mixed bag because this is, it's bass light, but it does not take EQ well in the bass department. Uh, there is a noticeable amount of distortion if you try to push this in any way. And it's also kind of picky on amplifiers. Part of that is because planar magnetic drivers, they like current, even if they're low impedance. You don't want to have an amp that can't deliver a lot of current, in my opinion, because it kind of uh, keeps the planar from doing what it can do. These also are only 8 ohm. That is the lowest headphone I have ever received for review when it comes to impedance. And the lower the impedance, the harder it is on your amplifier because there's less resistance in the circuit, so current 
gets flowing quicker. That's the whole pickiness I was talking about. You also have to make sure that if you have a, an amp that has too high of an output impedance, now you have to deal with dampening factors and all these other variables that start going into play. Because this has a 15% swing in impedance, depending on load, this can get in the mid six ohm range. That's game dangerous for some amps. It actually, uh, when I was turning it up and testing a uh, bass track, it shorted out my FIO KB3 keyboard that had the DAC built into it. It was too much current for what the headphones were requiring and the keyboard simply just couldn't do it, even though it was powered. So, you know, I think when it comes to matching, you need to make sure that if you do get these, you have an amp that's a little bit more robust and better made and try to pick something with a lower output impedance. Uh, if you leave the bass alone and you're not pushing it too hard, the rest of it is absolutely fine. It, the sensitivity is 101 uh, decibels, so it's not too bad as far as getting volume out of it. Um, but the bass being lighter, don't expect to add a lot of EQ to it because I mentioned the whole distortion thing earlier. It just doesn't like a lot of bass. But the bass you do get is very well defined. This is extremely sim similar to a Haifa Min Sundara. I will be making some comparisons to that in a moment. But I, for general listening, it's it's like a traditional planar magnetic headphone under 500. It doesn't break the mold. It's not game changing sound. The mid range I do rather like. It's actually very resolving. So from a clarity and technicality standpoint, at medium volume levels, I do like how clear and well articulated instruments are. It actually has great instrument separate separation. So I think you're gonna have a huge variety of customer reviews, you know, actual owners that bought these, that some are gonna love this and some won't, simply because there are things that make this shine, but if you're not, you know, exposing yourself to the weaknesses, like the elevated sub bass, if that's what you're looking for, then that doesn't become an issue. Now it is treble forward. I don't want to say it kind of creates a walkie talkie effect on a lot of music, but depending on the track and which pad you use, it does come across that way in some cases. So it's just a little bit thinner, brighter, and in some tracks, a little bit more nasally. You can easily tame down treble with EQ. And once you do that, you benefit from the honestly pretty incredible clarity performance that I was mentioning earlier. I think this sound signature is gonna play into certain strengths with genres and be exposed, frankly, with others. And it really comes down to preference. If you're looking for a punchy bass for rock music or you want deep extension for EDM, hip hop, that type of thing, it's not going to deliver that. However, the, the strength is absolutely the clarity and I do like the instrument separation. It's a good technical performer provided you're okay with the tonality that it brings. So now it's time to make things more confusing by talking about all the other wonderful planar magnetic open back headphones in this price range. I'm gonna start with the Odyssey MM100 because if you're comparing $300 or shopping for the Moondrop Para at $300, you should be comparing or considering the alternatives unless you had a reason not to. The Odyssey MM100 is um, more of a, it's marketed as a more affordable mixing headphone but consumers are still buying it for consumer use, and rightly so. You know, it has a similar headband design to the Maxwell, which has very high praise. And at the $400 price range, this isn't as technical of a performer as the Para. The Para has better instrument separation and clarity. However, the tonality is very different. This has a more dampened sound profile, but you can make the bass more dynamic and punchy. So if you're listening to rock and hip hop, you may have a little bit more impact presentation that you get on the MM100. The upper frequencies isn't perfect on this either though, and I think it just requires a different EQ. There are certain parts that can sound a little nasally and shouty, but also it's not, it doesn't read as treble for it as well. There's a really narrow snappiness to it around 14 kilohertz, but aside from that, it's a little bit darker and um, less forward than the Para. So pleasing listen, uh, listen, and I think it takes the EQ better than the Para. It seems to have a higher power handling before you run into any distortion issues. The pads are glued. That is one of one of the bummers. You do get the dual terminations of 3.5 and the cable it comes with has both left and right terminating into one so you can choose which side you want. I do like the MM100. Paying more for a less resolving headphone isn't really the most enticing thing, but it is built extremely well and it takes EQ well as also. Then you get in the FIO FT5, which kind of takes the MM100 approach to, uh, frankly, another level. The tuning on this one is, out of the box, the worst of all of these. It is a very thick, borderline muddy sounding headphone with a dark treble. It needs significant EQ. However, this takes EQ exceptionally well. 
And it's a balance, once you've done the EQ, it has a good balance of detail retrieval with bass impact. So if you're not in the ability or you don't have the ability to add your own EQ settings, I would not consider the FT5. I do absolutely love these pads, these all suede pads. I can wear this for a long time and the more traditional stretchy headband uh, is great for comfort as well. $500 is kind of a tough sell because now you get into the high five products, which have kind of owned the affordable planar magnetic lineup for a while. I'll say I'm saving the Sundara for last. Now, normally I wouldn't consider the excess against all of these, but this is 500, this retails for 500, but you can get this for like 380. The XS is, you know, we're talking about build quality and stuff with the Para. hi fi Men has kind of a mixed reputation when it comes to build quality. As a reviewer, I can only share how my experiences went, and all of my planar headphones from hi fi Men still work fine. I have one that has a loose terminal, and that's it, and that headphone's three years old. So this particular headphone, because of the larger oval drivers, it's more like an Ananda, Ananda which is a $700 headphone. It has excellent base extension. The larger oval shaped or teardrop shaped driver really takes EQ well. It has great clarity. Now you're finally getting into the clarity and separation that the Para has. And even though this headband looks somewhat basic, you know, this doesn't have like a super flashy upscale design, but it does have telescoping yokes. This does fit larger heads and the pads are absolutely massive. It's probably my favorite one here for the money simply because it's still comfortable enough for me. It uses replaceable 3.5 millimeter uh, terminals and also takes EQ well, but it's a slightly warmer presentation than the Para, a little bit more bass. The treble is comparably bright with uh, the ability to still do more EQ. So I don't think there's any reason against the Deva, or the Deva, I wouldn't consider that one in this price range, but the XS is great. Then, you have the Sundara, and this is where the biggest challenge of the Para is. This is where it's going to struggle the most because there's the design aspect. Physically, the, the Para looks great. I love the way this is styled. I like the swappable pads. You know, that's an issue with this one. So there, it's glued. <laughs> so you run into issues of long-term serviceability. However, mine still works great. The thing is, is these two are so close on a sound signature scale that if you already own a Sundara, don't buy a Para thinking you're getting a wildly different listening experience. They are very, very similar. They have the newer version of the Sundara has angled pads and comfort has been fine for me. It's technically less adjustable. There's really no swivel, but there is a little bit of flex and there is rotation here. So I still have to kind of push it in to get it to fit me right, but this definitely fits my smaller head better. It's a lot more secure for movement and it's still a relatively light headphone. This one also handles EQ a little bit better than the Para. Of all of these, the Para distorts much sooner at louder volumes if you're expecting any level of sub bass out of it. If you like to listen to music loud, I would prefer to just actually EQ bass out of it more, just so you don't have the distortion issues that the Para presents. So here's the thing, the, the challenge with the Para is to me the Sundara is the same price and overall it gives a similar enough experience with overall better potential when it comes to mixed volume listening and mixed genres that the Sundar just seems like a better pick to me. I'm not one to ever say you should buy this over this because you have to weigh in everything considered. I can only share my user experience. Um, like I said, this was sent to me for review. I have no motivation to say something for or against it, but there are some misses with the Para personally. The initial build quality results were a little bit worrisome. The low impedance is another issue making it more amp picky. I do like the innovative pad swap design and the removable cables. So there are some things I like. I feel like Moondrop is slowly getting there. I think the next revision will be even better. But for now, for what's on the market and what I've owned personally, I would still lean towards hi fi -Man in this price range. So hopefully you found this review helpful. I try to keep it as honest as I can. If I got something wrong or if you have your own opinion and you love your power, great. Shoot me a comment below. I'd love to hear what other people think about all of these headphones. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'd love to see you at the next video. And that being said, I'll see you next time. Bye.